In this video we'll be looking at the following three topics sets, Venn diagrams, and set operations. Looking at sets we'll usually use capital letters to indicate a particular set for instance the capital letters A, B, or X. For elements that are inside of a set we will use the lowercase letters and you'll see here examples little a or lowercase a, lowercase b, and lowercase x. If we want to look at elements that are inside of a set, we can say we can use this symbol right here, which is a little something like a smaller small e that is open. And it means that the lowercase letter a or element a is a member of or is an element of the set capital A. As with most operators or most symbols that we use in math we can put a line through it if we want to indicate not. And So in this case A is not an element of the set capital A. For subsets we, want, we can indicate that a set for instance A is a subset of the set B using this symbol right here. Notice that it's a in sort of like a U that's open to the right. Also this one has a underscore on it. That underscore means that we could have the set A be equal to the set B. That would mean that all the that the two sets are identical, that, that all the elements in A are are in B and vice versa. To indicate that there's a proper subset, we can use the symbol without the line underneath it, meaning that, that it's not possible that, that they'll be equal to each other. And in this case, we would mean that there's at least one element in the set B that is not in the set A. Now, as I mentioned, we have equality, or the two sets A and B are equal, if and only if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. Notice that when we have the the statements or the definitions of things we'll use if and only if. Sometimes that's abbreviated with an IFF and that that abbreviation just means if and only if. What does if and only if mean? It means that we can go both directions. That A and B are equal if the ones the items on the right are true and we can say if the items are on the right are true then A and B are equal. So it means that we can go that they it goes both directions. That one implies the other and the second one implies the first one. For some statements that it, it do, doesn't necessarily go both directions. To specify sets we have basic, two basic methods that we'll use. The first one is we'll just list out the elements of the set. In this case we've got a finite set and we can list them 1, 2, A, and B. And so we just list them out. The second method is to use some type of formulation to show what elements are in the set. And the way that we read this is A, the set A, is equal to the set of all elements X such that X is between 0 and 1. So the line here means such that. In the book that we're using for this class, there's a the sometimes the book will use the a colon <coughs> excuse me a colon there instead of a vertical line, uh, but they're 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 equivalent. For disjoint sets, we can also use the term mutually exclusive. I'll use those two terms in, um, in, um, interchangeably. From time to time I'll say disjoint and sometimes I'll use mutually exclusive. But to have disjoint sets it means that they have no elements in common. And so there's an example down here at the bottom where we've got two sets A and B, capital A and capital B. Capital A has two elements, little a and little b, and B has the elements X, Y, and Z. Since they have no elements in common, there's nothing in A that's in B and nothing in B that's in A, we say that those two sets are disjoint sets. If, however, we had, say we had X in 
B and also in A, then those would be those two sets would not be disjoint sets. The book uses some common set names for some common sets of, of elements. The first one is the counting numbers or positive integers. Starting at 1, you increase with the integers 1, 2, 3, and, uh, you know, unto infinity. The second is the natural numbers, and it's basically the same set as above, except we add the zero element. The third set is Z, or all integers. So it's all integers, both positive and negative, from minus infinity to infinity. And the last set is the real numbers. All, all, all real numbers, both positive and negative. And then we can note that there's that these follow the subset ordering as follows. P is the smallest. P is a subset of n because n includes a zero element. And notice that I don't put a line underneath it because they are all of these are proper subsets of each other. So n is a subset of z, and z is a subset of r. Now let's look at Venn diagrams, but before we do, let's look at two new sets that we haven't defined. The first is the universal set. I'll use U to indicate the universal set, and also the empty set. An empty set, of course, has no elements in it, and it uses a phi-like symbol. It's not exactly phi, but it's, it's like phi, the Greek letter phi. For a Venn diagram, we'll start with a box that indicates what we call the universal set. And so all the possible elements that we could have in a set are contained in the universal set. We'll also use circles or some other objects inside, <clears throat> inside the universal set to indicate subsets. And so I have three subsets here, A, B, and C. And notice that A and B overlap, so there could be some common elements between A and B here. And the way I've drawn it, C doesn't overlap with A and B, and so there, there can't be any common elements between A and B or between C and B. When we look at the different sets in, in the problems that we have, we'll show some diagrams like this and then maybe fill in to indicate what, what groupings that we're talking about for those sets. So let's look at some set operations. These are the basic set operations. The first is the union of two sets. So we have A, U, B. This is a, a upward facing U. And that the union of those two sets is equal to all elements of at all elements X such that X is in A or X is in B. So the union is a like an or operator. The elements are in a, a or in B. And so therefore it includes all the elements of A and, a and B. The intersection is A with a downward facing U, B. And it is all the elements X such that X is in A and X is in B. So that's a simulta simultaneous and operation. So this is only elements that are in both A and in B. The next is the complement. The complement can be shown in, in numerous ways. It, the book, I think, uses a uh, sub superscript C, little c. I'll use the a bar over it. It's just a little bit easier to, to show. So the complement will be A with a bar over it. And it's all elements of X such that X is in the universal set and not in the set that we've taken the complement of. So it's basically everything outside of, of the set A. The difference we can show in a couple, well, several ways, but here's two. One is with a slash in this direction. So this would be A minus B. We can also use a minus sign, A minus B. And it's all the elements in A that are not in B. So all the elements that are in A and not in B. 
the symmetric difference, or the book calls it symmetric difference, I'll probably use the terminology exclusive or when we use it. It's shown with this symbol with a, a circle with a plus sign in it. So it's A exclusive or B. And that's equal to the union of A and B minus the intersection of A and B. Or we can write it as also as A minus B union B minus A. I'm not sure why I used a different sign here. Probably should have used a backslash. But A minus B union B minus A. Here's some Venn diagrams that show all of those operations. First is the union. And notice that we've been shaded in all of A and B. So it's all elements that are in both of those. They're in, in those sets combined. Now the intersection is only the elements that are in both A and B. Remember this is an AND operator. This one is an OR operator. A or B, A and B. So it's only that little football shape between those two sets. The complement is everything in the universal set outside of the set A. And so we have everything that's outside in that universal set. The difference is here we have A minus B, and so it's everything that's in A, but not in B. So we exclude this little part here. And the exclusive OR, notice it's it's similar to the union, the OR, except it, we, it's what we call exclusive. We exclude the elements that are in both A and B, so it doesn't include that football shape in the middle there. Let's look at an example. This example has finite sets and we have the universal set contains the numbers 1 through 7 A contains 1, 2, and 3 and B contains 3, 4, and 5 first thing, oh so then what we're going to find the all of these, the complement the, the subtraction or the difference the union, the intersection, and the exclusive or. First thing I would do is look at, make a Venn diagram of the whole the whole situation where we have the universal set and then our subsets inside. We have A and B. I show them overlapped and we can put all the elements in there. Notice that the element 3 is in both A and B so I put it in that that little football shape in the middle. We have elements in A that are not in B so 1, 2 and then over here we have some in B that are not in A 4 and 5 and then don't forget to include the elements that are not in either A or B. So we have 6 and 7 out here. It's very easy to forget forget those elements and then not include them in your, your sets later. The, f the first we're going to look at is the, the complement of A. So basically everything outside A. So that will include the, uh, the items that are in B and also in our universal set. So 4, 5, 6, and 7. The difference is this shaded area here. And so it'll include just 1 and 2. If we look over here at our Venn diagram. The union is everything in A or B. And so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And notice that 3 is in both, but we only include it once in that union. We wouldn't, we wouldn't show it twice. The intersection is just this balloon or this football part here in the middle, which is just three. And the exclusive or is those elements that are in A or B but not the middle part. And so we live looking at our diagram up here would just be one, two, four, and five. And so there we have our exclusive or of A and B.